Hi, guys, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. Today, we have another great guest. Her name is Sue Kennedy, and she is going to be talking about healing with art. And some people even consider her the people whisperer, which is really, really cool. So welcome, Sue. (laughs) But before we get started, I'm going to ask you a question. In the past 10 years, how many weddings have you been to? Well, because of my age, I'm a little bit older. I'm more mature, let's say, I should say it that way. Uh, so people tend to not get married at my age. So my it's probably zero. Okay. So, yeah. That's perfectly fine. So I'm going to just tell you about this company and what they've done for couples who are getting married. But I think you can use this product for any occasion. So corporate event, like I just recently used this for uh, my son plays football and one of the kids got his leg broken and we had all the boys on the team call in. So this company is called Life on Record and they have this vintage rotary phone that's used as a guest book. So you can pick it up when you're at the event and or on your phone, as you just learned, and you can leave a five minute message, a 30 minute message. It doesn't matter. So um, you can say congratulations on your wedding or I hope you feel better. And right next to the phone, they have a QR code that you can take out your own cell phone and scan it. So you could do this, you know, before, after, you know, during the event, if you wanted to, and just use your own phone and leave that message too. So when all these recordings come through, they get burned onto a 12 inch vinyl record, or they get on this little cute boom box is so cute. And I guess, you know, I guess you're having a year anniversary and you have that cake you're saving, (laughs) but bring out the box or the record and listen to people talking to you. That's the great thing about it. You get to hear their voices all over again, wishing you the best of luck. So plans only start at $99. You get that phone number for one year, which is really cool. I want you to go and visit them at www.lifeonrecord.com. All right. I'm so I love that idea. That's it, amazing. What a great invention. Oh, I love it. You know, business. I love it. That's brilliant. It is brilliant. So, you know, I, I I hate to use it in this way, but it's coming up on a year anniversary. Uh, my friend passed last December 11th, but I haven't deleted her, her voicemail, her last voicemail to me, and I'll play it back just so I can hear her voice. So the concept is amazing. I yeah. love hearing people talk. And just really, you could tell in their tone of voice, yeah, congrats, or yeah, congrats. (laughs) You know, you're going to hear so many different sides of this. But it is a great concept. Um, So I was reading here, it looks like, you know, you're an author of successful books. You have a podcast called Full of Words, and people call you the people whisperer and healing a with art oh I just dying to know all this stuff about you so I'm I'm gonna be quiet the floor is yours tell us how you got started so thank you Nadine and um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you so how I got started I mean I always wanted to write uh, and paint and you know the the fun things and never thought I could yeah. as we do but you know I then went through uh some oh life experiences as we do as well and I you know was married had the the house the business dog all of that and it all came crashing down and to the point that I actually considered suicide it got that bad oh and yeah it wasn't good and then it was actually my dogs I've, I've still got one of them I only lost um the the one that actually sort of snapped me out of it I only lost him back in May so Mm -hmm. and he was over 16 years old and that's that's good 16 yeah Yeah. well the one I still got she's 16 as well so wow Wow. yeah I feel very blessed and 
Yeah, so he he noticed something wasn't quite right with me and, you know, he got his paw and he's like, what are you doing, you know, and he snapped me out of it and I'm forever grateful. And from there I thought, well, wow, why did I go down to that into that dark place? How did that happen and why? I mean, it was because of everything that just was like a domino effect. All of a sudden I was left with nothing, I'm like, apart from my dogs. And I'm like, wow, what, what's this all about? So I did a heap of research to figure out what was going on. Yeah. And from that, you know, I realized I had really bad depression. And so I did research and then pretty much I turned all that research into a book. And I did it mainly, of course, to heal myself. But then I thought, well, how good would this be if I actually publish the book and I can help other people as well? So yeah. Uh, how amazing would that be? So I did that. And then I, from there, went on to write 10 other books. And one of them and was. And others. <laughs> and what? then, yeah, one of those was, you know, how to write a book. And then I turned that into workshops as well as then, you know, into my coaching program that I now have. And of course, as you can see, you were asking about my painting behind me. I, I love art as well. So I'm an art therapist as well. And so I thought, what do I do? Do I do the writing? Do I do the art? Or why not combine both? Yes. So that's what I did. And I mean, I still can do them, you know, by themselves, but the program that I offer is is has got both. So I have a couple of different modalities as far as the art sort of component of that coaching program and uh it's yeah absolutely amazing the the two different ones yeah. that I offer and it's just you know dependent on the person because once we go to a canvas and I thought that's great but then if I'm helping someone write a book that's been through something a bit traumatic or uh, or they're very anxious a blank canvas might trigger them so I went hmm I need something else just in case that happens so I found this other amazing tool that I now have and it's called Neurographica and it's absolutely amazing and it's just using paper pen markers and it's, you know, probably just as powerful if not more powerful really. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, and it's it can be run standalone, as I said, and it can help you unblock when you go to write, but it can also help you if you're, uh stuck you know with something else or or with even trauma so that you you sort of can't get a, you know move forward in your life because of that yeah. trauma so this will help um uh, help you move forward so it's it's absolutely amazing like i had cancer a few years back and i actually used my art to get me through that that's good that's good i mean art really helps <clears throat> i was painting about a year and a half ago and it just it re releases maybe like laughter endorphins but you know and I sing so I know that releases some energy but painting also released an energy for me also and you know you're right when you paint there's different personalities that come out <laughs> because I saw my ex you could get mad at his painting sometime. I was like, he's really a perfectionist. But you know, if I messed up, it's like I'll just take another color and go over it, <laughs> you know, make something new. So, it. you know, it's just, you know, everybody has an outlet. Now, I think when I heard you say that's really interesting with the markers and stuff, and you said pen for coloring and stuff. And that will release more, you know, because you're paying attention to detail and what it is, right? Fo focusing on that trauma and, you know, it almost gives you a clarity. I used to do the medallas, you know, color them. And I would just listen to Enigma or Enya or something, and just kind of unwind, you know, and that's how I relieved a lot of my stress. So, but what you're doing you're teaching the workshops right with that as well yes. that's yeah. amazing wow. see i needed you i needed you a few years ago <laughs> so <laughs> but i probably still need you in the future too <laughs> so. yes oh look we're we're pretty much well we're not cars but we're the same 
concept. Yeah. You need to maintain a car. We need to keep maintaining ourselves. Oh, yes, it's, definitely. It's not a do it once and then it's all okay and you can no. move on. You need to continually work on yourself. Definitely. I agree with that. So so um, how many different paintings have you done in your life? <laughs> I don't know, a lot, a lot, because I, I sort of started looking around. I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's lots of canvases here. This is, I'm starting to fill up the house. It's like I need to do something else. So I, I work a lot in my journal as well. So I do um, lots of paint in that. So that way, yeah, you know, I'll make my own journals and then I can just work in them. And then when they fill up, well, I can make another one. That's cool. That's cool. We're going to, I'm going to put your stuff on our store so people can get that too. So, I mean, that's just amazing. And I mean, as an average, I know it was very time consuming to do a really good painting. Like what's the average time spent on a painting, would you say? Uh, so Depending if I'm doing it for an art exhibition or if I'm doing it just for healing purposes. So, yeah, it's just dependent on what it is. But, you know, some can take, you know, a, a, and you only do maybe a few hours at a time on it. So, yeah, some could take a few weeks and yeah. some could just take the one session, you know, of sitting down and working on it, you know. But I like to try and have a break. So I'll do something and then I'll have a bit of a break and then come back to it because yeah. after a while, it's like with anything we do, if we're, working at it after a while you sort of get I don't know if stale's the right word but you you sort of maybe it's connection you're not connected to it in the same energy that you were when you first got to it so yeah. it's time to step back when you do that because you're not actually helping yourself at all by doing that you need to just step away and come back at it you know later time if it's not that same day the next day or the next week whenever that is yeah definitely I know I've had to do that before even in journaling I had to do that I was like eh, okay I just don't know I gotta break away for a little bit and then come back so you know somebody was telling me and I it's funny because I find this so true but our creative mind will keep going like whether it's late at night and we're trying to sleep <laughs> or in the shower. I was like, you're right. I need a whiteboard in the shower because I could write down all these ideas I didn't think of before and just go with that. Waterproof. Make sure it's waterproof. Waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. But, you know, the creative soul will always be creative. And, you know, when I journaled, I finished like a whole book but I reread it and I actually said this could be a book it's a very sad book but this really happened and you know it's just like well I can't turn this into a book because I was writing the truth down I was like it would have to all be reworded <laughs> so but okay. how I mean for somebody who's wanting to get into writing um how did you I mean you wrote a book about it like what's how did you know you wanted to be a writer? I've always just had a passion for writing and I don't know what it is. I think we 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 are. We're all born to be something and, and that, you know, whatever that is, it's inside of us and it, it just, you know, bubbles away until we finally stop and go, well, maybe I should actually do something about that. Yeah. You know, so and you know, I, and I've had readings like with astrologers and, and other mediums that, you know, have said to me that the, you know, reason I've been put on this earth at this time was to teach. Now, whether that's through writing or standing in front of a class, and I do both. So, and that is my happy place. When I'm, right. you know, doing those things, it's my happy place as well as my art. But that's, I'm teaching that as well. So it yeah. all comes back to teaching. So, yeah, and with the coaching, it's, as I said, that's my happy place. And every time I do it, I'm extremely happy. I, I think, wow, this is amazing. I don't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it took, I'm 45 now, but I found uh, maybe it's been five years. I know what my spiritual gift is. I, I, I just didn't know how to use it properly. 
And then it kind of led into now. And I learned, well, I started a company about three, four years ago called Webcast. And it was interviews at different vendors in the event planning industry. I loved it, but it was going to cost a lot of money just to do that. So it tapered way down. And then podcasts became a thing. And, you know, I was in a different route you know, training and stuff. And somebody made a comment like, oh, I was hoping to hear you online speak. And I was like telling my friend about this. And I just, I never thought about it, you know? And I was like, wait, this is webcast all over again, but I don't want to just do event industry. I want it to be everything, you know, I want people to be heard, you know, go from there. And I was listening to a song and it, its lyrics were keep hope alive and i go nobody has nadine really in their life as a name i was like that goes <laughs> so then it was born and here i am <laughs> and i love it, it. That's awesome. yeah and a lot of people have been writing that they wanted to come on the show and everything and i feel so blessed about that because learning about different people and what they do is amazing so but teaching that's a gift altogether. And I, what you're doing is helping so many people. So, you know, I've always wondered about that. You know, I want to write a book, but I don't know how to get started. Um, if it's online, where can people find your information to take one of your courses? So probably the best thing I, I've got a, what I normally offer to listeners on podcasts is it's uh a, just a landing page where I've got a whole heap of different resources plus you can actually contact me and have a 30 minute free heartstorming session and work out you know what's the best for you you know yeah. which which way do you do you get, get coaching do you go and do some one of the courses so yeah it's it's a good place to start but that's at um, www.authoracademy.com.au forward slash gifts g-i-f-t-s which I oh, think I've sent you yes, and probably I'm going to put it on there. Yes, I'm yeah. going to put everything on there probably tonight. <laughs> it's going to be up and running, so which is really cool. So, but definitely now. Um, I knew in the beginning you went to college and right. Yeah, that's what I was reading. Right, <laughs> you went to Kennedy Publishing. Was that a college or just a? Course. Oh, Sue Kennedy. No, Sue Kennedy Publishing is is one of my little entities. Oh, okay, okay. So I here yeah, help people publish their books. So the the whole coaching program is you know help holding your hand pretty much from the beginning from your ID. If you've already got an ID, that's okay. As you know, like if you've already started writing, that's okay as well. But yeah. I pretty much hold your hand and hold you accountable through the whole process. And then part of the package includes proofreading, editing, you know, all the publishing things that you have to <clears throat> um, do. So pardon me. No, I'm sorry. Um, it reminds uh, me of a Netflix. Um, she's a writer in the show, but the person she goes to, you know, is a proofreader. I don't like this. And she's like, they're like, start all over. And she's like, what? <laughs> but I, I just like watching her because she'll just sit there and da, 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 da. I was like, how does that come to her like that? I just never understood, but it is a gift, you know, to be able to write those and have the imagination and stuff. So, you know, what do you, I mean, besides teaching, have you wrote anything outside of a teaching? Like, have you ever done a romance or fantasy? No, or, no? I've never written fiction I've always been done all my books are non-fiction non-fiction so, okay yeah I, I, and one day when I get a chance and I have time and when I'm not helping other people I might sit down and write my own fiction book that would be cool so yeah. let us know when you do do that so we'll have to bring you on again and definitely talk about that so yeah. definitely um you also had a podcast yes and Tell us about your podcast because I know everybody's going to want to go check this out. <laughs> I hope so. It's yeah, it's actually a friend of mine, her and I, we actually met at a marketing mentoring group. Mm -hmm. We ended up in the same little group and she's a copywriter 
and of course me book coach so yeah we love words so we decided to uh, well I've always wanted to run a podcast and I said to her because she said let's catch up for coffee and get to know each other and you know so yeah. we did that here we are like two years later <laughs> uh we've, we've well we're now in now like nearly in our second year of the podcast and so yeah I said to her let's would you be interested in running a podcast with me and she went oh yeah okay I said, well, you know, we sort of get on really well. You, you're you all about words, so am I. And then so that's why we ended up, we came up with the word full of words and because all the other things that we found were taken. But And then I said, well, that's sort of quite funny because, you know, people can say, yeah. well, you're full, you know, um, but instead we're full of words. <laughs> so, that's cool, though. <laughs> so, yeah, we started that and then, yeah, it was, it was, we just have a lot of fun. We, it's casual like this, you know, and that's the best way to have it. We have a few laughs and we just talk all about like words and language and how different people, like all the guests that we have on, we just ask them, you know, how they use words and language with what they do. And it's amazing how everyone's story is different and the I way bet. they use it. It's amazing. And we have, yeah, as I said, lots and lots of fun. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So you really dig into a person and have you ever been like, if you could write a story, what would it be? What words would you be using in it to kind of bring them out of that bubble to see if, you know, what they have is good or how does that work? Well, we haven't actually had many, we've had a few authors, Mm -hmm. but we are going to run an author's series, so we'll have different authors, and that's probably where those questions will come in. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. At the moment, we've, the majority of people we've had have just been pretty much business owners and, and you know, talking about all the ways they use the words and language in in how they run their business and, you know, how they use it with their clients. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, just... I, for me, like being based just in relationship world as a certified wedding coordinator, relationship coach, and, you know, I'm just all over the place. So that's the real life in my part of it. You know, for me, if I was to write a book, it'd be how to date in your (laughs) forties. I already got that figured out. (laughs) You know, it has gotten harder in real life in today's world right now. And, you know, who... I have never heard the term ghosting until like two years ago, I think. Do you know what ghosting is? Yes. yes. And ghost, okay. And catfishing. <laughs> these are things I had to learn. And, you know, social media is all ganged up. And, you know, if you have a podcast, you have to have a TikTok. And I'm like, a what? <laughs> so my 11 year old son, I'm like, Mommy doesn't know how to work this good. I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, mom, just use this filter and talk into the screen. I'm like, okay. (laughs) You know, so I tried. But I decided, like, if I'm going to do this TikTok thing, I'm going to show the real me. I like to sing. I'm going to use the different filters, have fun, and maybe give one-on-one tips, you know. But, I mean, have you done a TikTok? Oh, look, I've started using it, and then I've, I've sort of, yeah, Given it a away because <laughs> it's like how many things do I need to be on and I'm like yeah I just need to focus on what's working yes and yeah instead of trying to spread too far which is what I was trying to do and it just yeah it was just too much <laughs> it is a lot of work and I call it the social media calendar in my life Monday focus on this but you still gotta do this and make sure you do this in the evening before you go home and then just let it set you know it's just one of those things that's just like wow this is a lot of work I didn't know it was gonna be this much work so and I'm grateful for it you know definitely so but other than that um well, I know you said you had pets. What else do you, people are going to want to know you besides painting and your doggies? What else do you do for fun? Do you go out dining, movies? No, I don't get a chance because unfortunately, well, it's not unfortunate. I, well, <laughs> um, I take I'm my full time carer for my elderly mother as well. So I don't get to have yeah. a lot of fun. 
but that's okay. It's my turn to look after her and, you know, she's 89 and a half. So, you know, I'm grateful that she's still in my life and, yeah, that I can take care of her. Definitely, definitely. So I, love, um, I do love to read. There you go. I, I love to read and yeah, just pretty, that's pretty much, I mean, my art. I love to just do the art and, you know, put a bit of soft I, music on. Yeah, that would feel good. Yeah, so I'd be putting on Michael Bublé or Frank Sinatra just painting away. <laughs> so yeah. it's definitely. Um, are your books on Audible or at all? No, I haven't put any of them on there. I should. Oh. I definitely should. Okay, because for me, I tell everybody this in my podcast. I'm the one who likes to listen. I I don't hold books, and my daughter is just like me. <laughs> I bought her a book. And she goes, I'm not going to read this. And then she goes, you know what? After thinking about it and you not returning it for me, I'm going to read this. And I'm like, good, bravo. But I was like, I couldn't get mad at her because she sounds like me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but. I admit, when I when I go, I do go walking every day, just around at home because I'm on 10 acres. And so I walk and I listen to other podcasts or or audio books so there you go yeah so yeah so I mean for me unfortunately like I listened to a podcast on what was happening and I'm not afraid to share this uh I was getting catfished um the person who was do doing it took over some celebrities account a I'm not stupid so I was like, no, no. And then another one, I'm so sorry, this is happening to you. That's not me, blah, 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 you know? And it's kind of like, okay, well, whatever, you know, I'm not into this. But every time I would let go, a new page would form. And I was like, you know, I started to go, you know, we have already talked. You already filmed a commercial, you know? What commercial did you do? Huh? <laughs> I was like, okay, bye. If you don't know what commercial you did for a big brand name, you know, but it was so bad. I actually took my son to football and it's funny. I do a podcast, but I haven't listened to any podcasts and I just typed in catfish and I guess it was like a MTV one branding catfish or something. And I was listening to it going, yeah, this is happening to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it gave me that education. Like, this is what I need to do. I need to be stronger and really put my foot down because I wasn't being strong enough. I guess I'm too open hearted or something. So I really had to put that down. But that was the first podcast that I really listened to in a long time. And now I try to listen to other podcasts when I'm starting to rest because I think it's just something about hearing the talking and being like agreeing with what the topic is and learning something new is so important but not only that you're hearing it from the world now and it's not just a selected few that you know if you're a celebrity it's just because you're good at acting you know it's you know what's the word I'm looking for you know the word <laughs> because uh, it's just you have a bigger audience and people will be drawn to you if they like what you're serving or you know teaching so yeah definitely well I mean like I I like to listen to I'm a cricket tragic uh is the other thing but I love listening to the Howie games which is popular here he's a uh, Mark Howard's a, a well, he's a journalist, but he's a commentator and he interviews all the different cricketers, but it's also other sports oh. people as well. And it's he has lots of fun with these people and it's really interesting as well. I've learned so much from it. And, <laughs> and I, I enjoy that because I, when I go for my walk, I try and do something that sort of turns my brain off, you know, the, the working mind. So that's why I, you know, sort of do that as I'm walking around. I'm, you know, trying to relax the mind so to speak. that's what I'm learning too ever since I started this podcast that it's been getting really really busy and I didn't have podcasts this weekend and I'm like 
okay, put your phone down. Don't look at it that much because if not, you're going to end up working. There's going to be an email. There's going to be a messenger. You know, I need this. I need that. I'm just like, but I had to take me time again to unwind from everything. And I was like, I got my son. I wanted to hang out with my mom a little bit, you know, and just watch football. <laughs> and, you know, just, yeah. You've got to have time out like I used to work seven days a week and I just went something's got to give here this is not good so I just went that's it and this was a few years back now I just went that's it the weekend is mine yeah I'm gonna do what I want whether it's just sitting around watching a movie reading a book just sitting with my mum chatting playing with the dogs whatever it is no work and it's just it's made a huge difference yeah, I bet it has. I, I It was funny because Calendy, I thought I canceled the subscription, but it was still on. <laughs> this is a funny story. It, it was still on the website and I'm getting bing, bing, bing and all these dates. And like, I was like, I'm working that time. Like what is happening? And they never canceled me. So I had to go back to each person who booked the time. And I felt so bad. It was like, I, I didn't know I had this. I actually have a full-time job, but I spent that evening spending, you know, here's the link. And I decided to keep Calendy this time. And I go, here's what is available if you don't mind to reschedule. And everybody took it well, but you know, what a surprise. <laughs> I don't mind doing it, just not, I don't want to get fired <laughs> from my real job. So, <laughs> but definitely. So, but yeah, so it's been a fun adventure, but I love your podcast name. That's just really cool to me because full of words. Now, why did people actually call you the people whisperer? I mean, you hear the dog whisperer, but you have the people. So I have been told by many of my clients and friends that I do have a gift uh, and that I suppose is coined, you know, the people yeah. whisperer. So when when I'm helping people, they they just they seem to connect with me. I'm, I'm able to connect with them on a different level where they feel very comfortable with me and 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 can you know they feel safe and able to share their story with me without you know being anxious or frightened or whatever that may be. So yeah, that's sort of pretty much it. I, and I I can just sort of drag the gold nuggets out. Good, good. Gently, I pull those beautiful gold nuggets out. So, <laughs> and I seem to have a lovely knack of being able to do that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, over many years, I was like, I don't understand. It's on the phone too, but people will just come up to me that I don't know and tell me all their problems. <laughs> and I'm just like, um, okay. But I've become a really good listener and I decided to take more courses to get me as a life coach and a relationship coach because being a certified wedding planner, I've learned everything through there. So I just wanted to kind of take that and build upon it and be the best listener I could to help people. And I'm happy to be here now because I get to hear more stories but I'm not out as much to hear all the other ones, if that makes sense. But, you know, I just love it. Um, definitely. So, and then your guides to success and the five steps you talked about, and you talked about, um, the art therapy and then, um, what are the other ones that make it to empower others what when am i missing you had five steps correct yes this is pretty much it so i've got yeah my unique five-step process for uh -huh. and that's i've got that as a, a coaching package okay. and i I've got three and six month packages and and uh oh okay or, yeah and if you don't like if you don't if they're not long enough for you it's fine we can then work something out and then just go from month to month after that to you know however long it you, you know it would take you to finish so that's something that's yeah also on offer and as I mentioned you can do just the art component if if that's all you feel like doing and you don't really want to 
you know, you're not ready to write the book yet. Maybe you do need that uh, component so that we can unblock and clear all that so the book can come out. The book can come out. You hear that? If you're listening to this awesome lady, I mean, you may have an idea. You're just sitting here like, how do I get started? I'm going to encourage my listeners to come to you definitely. And here she is. But go to her website. You know what? Everybody is going to have this idea. Now, I always thought I wanted a ghostwriter. Do you do any ghostwriting? I can do it, but it's a it's a lot more expensive because you know that it takes quite a it's a quite a big undertaking to ghostwrite. I actually did ghostwrite for a gentleman or oh, a few years back now, because English wasn't his first language. He was actually a Vietnamese okay. gentleman, lovely man, and yeah, he said, well, "I can't write it in English, but you know, can you do it for me?" So yeah, I ended up writing the book for him. So oh, it was, okay. Well, she's expensive, but that's cool. And it does take a lot of time. And, (laughs) you know, it's like your brain has to go, okay, I'm into this scenario. This is how he would want to portray this coming out. So it is a lot of work. And you know what? I mean, I, I looked into it many years ago. I have a story I want written, but I don't want to write it. I want someone else to do it for me. So, and then I was like, I you gave up. Always, you can always just re- record it and get it transcribed. Like you don't have to, you know. And then you can sort of massage it from there. Oh wow! You know? I didn't know that. That's, that's a way of doing it because, yeah, it's. I, I, I really believe that people. I, I prefer to hear your voice than someone mm-hmm. else's. I mean, a good ghostwriter, of course, gets to know you. Yeah, and you know, interviews you for quite a bit to get to know you and what you're trying to achieve with the book, so that they can write it in your voice. So, but you know, if you can talk honestly, you can write a book. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I think that's where the word patience comes in, (laughs) and not like writing one sentence and be like, "I'm done." (laughs) You know. Just record it. Like if, you know, you've got an idea, just sit there and record it. Yeah. And I mean, nowadays the software that we have can easily transcribe it. Like a Microsoft Word, I think you can just turn the microphone on and talk and it types it for you. Wow. And probably with a all this AI stuff coming out too, man, I exactly. even had to talk with my son because what they're advertising is I need an article on this. And I go, uh-uh, you can not do that on your phone for school projects. And I think the teachers will know, but still, that's cheating in my book. So I tell it my is. son, you need to it's, do it old school. But even like people, you know, think, oh, I'm going to write a book with AI. Well, yeah, no, no. please don't. Get, get ideas. Like AI is great as, as your little assistant to give you ideas so that you can then, you know, move forward from those ideas. And, you know, and that's the thing. Once you get those ideas, the content will start automatically downloading for you into your own brain. So, yeah, there's no need for AI. <laughs> it's called creativity and having a passion to do something. That's what people want to hear, and that's what will sell. Not something that's going to be all put into words, and then if you read it, you're going to be. I didn't want it to say that, you know. I know for my job, you know, I can do a newsletter, but I'm going to have three people proofread it, you know, make sure they're okay with it, you know. Mm-hmm. I hate to be saying I second guess it. I really don't, but there's some different views that people will see and go, no, we need to turn it this way or it needs to go that direction. And then we just reward it to that direction. And, you know, inspiration Mm -hmm. is the word I'm looking for. You'll find it somewhere, even if it's on a walk and just meditating, it will come to you. And then that's a good way to go about it. So. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, you can just contact someone like me, me or yeah. someone, either way, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I can give you ideas and help inspire you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to put all your information on our social media 
um, your book will be on also the storefront of keephopealivepodcast.com, which is very nice. So you can get all those. Um, and then I'm getting so old. <laughs> I, I think we covered everything, right? <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, we did. Um, so, but yeah, I want to say thank you to you because you are very knowledgeable in what you do. When it gets my time, I'm contacting you. I'm going to be like, hey, do you remember being on my podcast? I'm ready to write my book. I tried the talking into thing, but it didn't work. I need to talk to you. That's what our conversation's going to be. And then I'm going to have to sit down for about a year and just write it out. <laughs> so all to helping you, Nadine. Yeah, definitely. So, but I also want to, you know, give a shout out to our other sponsors for Keep Up Alive. Uh, of course, we talked about lifeonrecord.com for your interactive guest book, which is really nice. We have Bridal Shows, Inc., and that's based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So if you're planning a special event, you can see what shows they have. I believe it's like January, July, September, and I think there's another one. So I may be missing it, but they'll have a list of their shows. You can meet different vendors, get to know them see what their services are. Maybe you'll just end up booking them. So please check them out as well. Then we have PartytimeTexas.com, your one-stop shop for all your party needs. So if you need DJs, bands, caterers, photographers, clowns, bounce houses, casinos, we do it all. You know, I always say ah, at that because I work there. I keep so I don't want people to know I work there, but I work there. <laughs> so go to www.partytimetexas.com. Then we have Miles and Smiles, Miss Deborah Rose. And it's DeborahRose.com. She does the handwriting analysis and lipstick readings, and she is accurate. She's putting this fun concept into many events right now, and it's amazing. I... I'm going to be hiring for all my events because she's great. It doesn't matter if it's Halloween or Christmas or New Year's. That would be cool. New Year's, get a reading and see where you go. <laughs> so, but then we have Bryce Harney and that's BryceMagic.com. He is a magician, a very well-known magician traveling in the United States right now. And he's a mind mentalist readers so he does a lot of corporate big events and does church events too and can pull in those church you know sermons also and he delivers so it's amazing he's a great guy too then our last one is richmondpunch.net he is a violinist he has been doing this for so many years um he does travel back and forth. He graduated from the Julie Arts and he's been on TV shows with his music. And he is also performed in front of a million people. So check him out as well. But once again, I want to say thank you so much. We're going to be putting all your socials onto our website and make sure they contact you right away. <laughs> so, but until next time, guys, I hope you have a great week. We're about to hit the holidays. Wherever you find your podcast, you can find us. Make sure to sign up on our YouTube channel and subscribe there. Other than that, love and light. Bye-bye. <laughs>